Good evening everyone, welcome back to SFR for round 13 of the Japanese Grand Prix. My name is X Indigo or Jamie and alongside me as always is Oliver. I think he joined the party. Hello mate, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright buddy. Um, are you ready for another week of racing in Japan? After a very good exciting race in Brazil, uh, the stewards have um, done, done their deliberating on, the, um, on their wise wisdom. And now here we are in the Japanese Grand Prix. Let's, let's get this going. And last time in Brazil, we saw our new race winner of the season. And in general here at SFR, it belonged to Berimi. We saw this coming. Berimi tried to get his first win of the season, but thankfully he managed to get it. So let's see if he can continue this form because Red Bull are leading the championship by quite a long way now in terms of constructors. And Berimi is actually close in terms of drivers. He's only about 25 points away from MDJ and MDJ somehow leads the championship after falling away and guess what MDJ and Harry Kane are tied on points for the first time this season unbelievable what a close championship we have I mean I mean Red Bull themselves they're running away with it in the in the championship we got no Harry Kane tonight it, it's been now his other Red Bull seats will be Burmeister so Harry so MDJ and Bear Remy and even Glock as well will be taking full advantage of that tonight. Oh, I just noticed that too. So no Harry Kane. And will he regret it not joining here in Japan? Because last season, he had a great result. He finished in P2 after a late move on Samid to claim P2 in the end. And Hazara, who was the man who won the Grand Prix. And last season, Oliver, I did my research about the Japanese Grand Prix. And you were in this Grand Prix. And it was a wet race, but you started on dries for like 30, 40 laps. Do you remember that? I do remember that. I t <laughs> that was a really tough event, but I'll tell you what, the, in the F1 22 game, I mean, we all remember the F1 22 game. I mean, but that was a bit of a controversial one, but I've actually got along with it very well. And in Division 2, I won a, an, an impressive 14 seconds in the lovely McLaren that I drove, and uh, that was a very, very lovely day, to say the least. And Smoke is currently on his flying lap, going through the S's. Yes, he is indeed. The famous S's are out here in Japan, like um, Magus and Beckett in a, in a light that way, but obviously more corners and a bit more difficult indeed as we make our way towards the end of the first set. So 32.4, but obviously it's uh, the first part of qualifying. Not going to really see representative lap times come in and very quickly here as he makes his way down towards the hip and he goes. It can be a difficult one. You don't really want to hit the inside of the apex. And by the way, I had a race around here on Sunday. I finished in P3, but it wasn't easy because the safety car came out on lap six or seven, went to the media compound tyres, had, had to take them towards the end of the Grand Prix, and my tyres on 82%, and Glock has retired. I'm not quite sure if he's got a qualifying ban, albeit I did read the stewards report, but there were so many things going on, I was trying to scroll my way through, skim read it as you would say, but I didn't see any qualifying ban. I know MDJ picked up a penalty after the race with the collision with Glock, so Glock restarted the back of the field like he did when, he, when I raced against him, I think uh, a few weeks ago, and I came out on top of him. Finished in P1, he finished in P2. But Smoke crossed the line now to go 29.8. I expected Pole to be around the 26s, a 26.5, I'm going to go with. Yeah, I think so too. And um, both of the Red Bulls right now on their, on their, on their flying ladders. But Mike gets really out of shape there in the S. He saved the car brilliantly, but there was a waggy tail on that Red Bull, but um, he'll be uh, doing a job for, for Harry Kane tonight in the Constructors' Championship, of course. The, everything that Burmeister will do will be for the Constructors' Championship, not for Harry Kane. So, Burmeister needs to do a job for tonight for the Red Bull team. He does indeed. Last time he raced here in SFR was at the Bahrain Grand Prix. I believe he finished inside the top 10 as Atlas goes to the top of the time machines with a 27.9. So more like it on those soft compound tyres. But we're going to see Bear Eby. What can he do in this middle sector? Is it going to be a 10.2 in the middle sector? 10.6. So it's 4 tenths off. So Langfeld goes quickest with a 27.7. I've got a lot of information around this track after racing here in Suzuka on Sunday and a few weeks ago too. So yeah, I've had good results here around Suzuka. And let's see what the Red Bull can do as he makes his way down towards the line. It's going to be a 27.2. So still a bit off the pace from what I predicted, but still got plenty of time left to go as the Williams behind him and both Williams behind us, I think, start a lap. 
Yeah, so I think Rogue Smithy is currently behind MDJ at the moment. But we got, we also got a, what would Laser do in this championship? Because he's still not far from the championship, but he is trying to. But he needs to get another good result here again tonight. He finished, the, he finished in the top five last time in Brazil, as far as I remember. But he's not in this championship fight either. But you got to think about this: Samad had a fantastic race um, in in Brazil. He was actually one of my dark horses tonight. So let's see if he can keep that good, good form going. Yeah, it did. Samet also scored a podium here in Japan last year as a finished in P3. Glock had a slow puncher because they wanted the intermediates, so the intermediates were dying towards the end. And uh, Glock unfortunately had a puncher, I think, towards 130R, and he lost the podium, fell down to P4, and Samet took advantage where Harry K went down the inside. So another to retire here in qualifying is Makia, so he starts the back alongside Glock. But MDJ, our championship round for the man who can score many points tonight ahead of Harry Kane because he's not here tonight. Let's see what MDJ. DJ does in this middle sector at 10.3 that's three tenths quicker than what we saw Bear Eby managed to do in that middle sector alone so MDJ should be in the 26ers and let's see what he does coming towards the tri triangle chicane we saw Aiton Senna and Alan Frost crashed there back in 1989 and here comes MDJ coming towards the line it's a 26.9 and he puts himself three tenths clear of Bear Eby in P2 then Noldus goes up into P3 Noldus actually scored his best result at the Bahrain Grand Prix and he's currently on good form so far but Noldus so can he get himself further up the field and join in his fight he seems to find more pace recently yeah Rogue Smith he's about to come through now uh, let's see how he gets on as he takes a wide line through the final corner it's going to be uh, it was it was actually he aborted his lap and then he went to go for another run Martin puts it up into P4 a 127.4 for that one so let's see who else is out on track we've got Lord Danny Boy as well in there as well Ramavaj is in there as well we've got uh, Draugen he's just started his lap let's see what Lord Danny Boy will do he's he's, he's, done, a, he's just done an off lap as well he's still going for another run Drog is it's an interesting one because he's another dark horse as well in the Alpha Tower. He's always been around the top, around the leaders. Every single time we see him, but let's see how Drog it will do tonight. And Ramavaj, I'm on board with him right now in the Alpha May, who seems to be picking up podiums every time he races. He's a reserve driver, he hasn't turned up to every single race, but every time he does, seems to find himself on a podium. He's had a win this season back at the Hungarian Grand Prix after denying Laser and MDJ. So here he is, right in the final corner. Let's see if he can also get himself in the 26ers. No, he can't, but still, P2 is at best for him at 27.2. So he's also got some good pace. And Martin as well in P5, who seems recently to be outside the top 10 in the races and qualified but now it's up into P5 so can he work his way through there but we still got a lot of drivers who haven't set a lot of time I think Draugrid is one of them and now he's making his way towards the lovely spoon corner didn't quite hook it up in the first part but the second part very nice and tidy indeed it is quite difficult to hook it up through there you've got to carry the speed as well take a wider angle without clipping the grass obviously in real life the grass isn't there we saw Perez Verstappen and a few others who took that wider angle off the track with one wheel off the track and swooped through there and it was very nice indeed using all the track of Perez was only about 700 away from Verstappen as well in qualifying so we got closer and closer to considering he was 7 tenths away last yeah, and here comes Drago coming towards the line now. It's P6 for him with a 27.4. Very good after him, Sonic Hawk. Our, our, let's say our SFR general, to say the least, the, the, the main leader of SFR, the boss of SFR, the owner of SFR is Sonic Hawk. He's done a fine job of running the league by storm. Let's see how it does uh, through the degners. This the, in my opinion, the most difficult course of the track. And he's got the first bit, and then he got the second part with sort of times up. And you can't, if you want to run all that curve on the inside, because otherwise it will undercut the car very much. Very good work on through the Dunlop hairpin, where Sergio wears a very handy Kamui Kobayashi. Remember that name, I wonder. Where he put up amazing moves back in 2011. It's a cycle now through Spoon, where the Stappen and Sebastian Vettel made contact in 2018, I believe. So here comes Sonic Horn now towards 130 off. This is where Alonso made an absolute audacious move down in 130 off, around the outside of, I think it was Michael Schumacher back in the day, and also Sergio Perez on uh, Lewis Hamilton as well at this year's Grand Prix. Here comes Sonic Horn now through around the hairpin, well, not the hairpin, the chicane. Here comes Sonic Horn now. 129.4, that's one of his bank collapse. But here comes Laser, this is a vital race for him. 
but he's probably done the validation. I think he also made a mistake in the S section. I did see a McLaren off the track in the first sector. That was him. JDM was heading towards turn one, although he's on the intermediate tyres, so he won't be uh, setting hot laps on there. Burmeister in the red ball. He was also racing here. The Japanese Grand Prix picks up a decent toe. It's 11.2, so he's a second away from the best middle sector we've seen so far. And uh, Daniel says Martin and Draugr have set exactly the same time 27.426. Incredible margins BRB. there. BRB. And, Ma and Burmeister comes towards the finish line now. He goes up into P11. I don't know what's going on with the black box on the left hand side of the screen. Apparently, Mackett keeps sending me phone requests all the time, so I'm not quite sure why that keeps popping up there, whether it's a glitch or not. But Mackett's retired, so hopefully, he's not sending me phone requests all the time. It is distracting. But here comes Atlas Copo coming towards the line. It's currently P8 with a 27.5. It's replaced by Samid, last season's pole sitter, or last season's podium sitter, sorry, who goes in a 27.4. But look at this P5 down to P8 has done a 27.4. So. It's incredibly tight in that midfield there. Unsurprisingly, these guys showing their pace, skills, and class as well. 5.8 km circuit. Really long corners indeed. Challenging corners, especially to first setter, first degna, and the second degna too. But it's incredible how these guys could get so close to contention. JDM there on the inters. I'm not quite sure if he's trying to practice in the wet conditions for the race, but... Um, here comes Smoke, who goes up into P10, had his best result back in Saudi Arabia. There's an Aston Martin right behind us, I think, started a flying lap. That must be Nordis, and Nordis is on a outlap, I think it is, or in lap. But we're going board with the other Aston Martin, where is he? Let's have a look, shall we, down to the field. That's Sonic Hawk, sorry, going through the first set. I'd love to watch these cars as he gets on the curb, and he's going to hit the wall. And that's very lucky to not get any damage, because usually, with a slow crash like that, tyres do come off so he's very lucky to escape from the gravel trap or lose a tyre but uh, I think Bear Emi has invalidated his lap time unfortunately so let's see if he does dive into the pit lane because you can see the fuel on the left hand side he symbolises that he's run out of fuel too and Langfell is coming towards the triangle chicane but he's actually run out of fuel so he won't be setting any fast lap times with that fuel and is there any more coming towards? We are coming towards the latest stage of qualifying too so we should uh, see Zenon is coming on the lap in the Ferrari Let's have a look at him then. So he has had uh, not the best of results, unfortunately, for him in the Ferrari. Here he is coming towards the middle sector. 10.7, that's a decent middle sector there from Zina. I do believe he qualified in the top 10 at the Brazilian Grand Prix, but unfortunately had to retire. Now he comes towards the triangle chicane. There is actually there is actually a name for that chicane, but I actually forgot, to be honest with you. And here he is coming towards the line. It's P9 again, so he's inside the top 10, replacing at last there. Yeah, it was a good, good, decent lap there from Vizena, and hopefully he can get a score a good, decent result today of a very disappointing Brazilian Grand Prix. Laser is on an outlap now, he tends to leave it late. Let's see how he gets on. But it's a very crucial race for Laser. We've also got Imola next week, but we are starting to get to the final stages of the season. So that is going to be the crucial part. And Glock points out there for P5 to P8 is 2000, so that is super close. Look at that for P8, P5 to P8. Fine margin between all those drivers there. And I do, I think you said Martin uh, Laser is going for an outlap then. So there he is in the McLaren. Hasn't scored a podium since the third race of the season. He has been lacking pace, but he has been crucially there inside the top five consistently, other than Monza when he retired then. So can he finally get on the podium here in Japan. We've said it through the past few races, our championship defending title. But unfortunately for him, he's quite far down in the championship. But we'll see what he can do with his second lap, I believe, in Japan as he validated his first lap. There's Martin out behind us. Not quite sure if he made a mistake or not because he was on a flying lap. So must have backed out of it after he didn't have a good first set. So, so here he is coming towards the ch chicane, just preparing his tyres, taking a wider angle through there. And what time will probably post clock? Daniel says, what time will probably post clock what time will clock probably post there we go trying to confuse with the comment section there here comes laser coming towards the first corner you don't break for the first corner you start to break in the second corner just lifted off there very nicely done lean on the curb on the outside now coming towards turn three flick it in carrying the speed with here and down to fifth we go and carrying the speed as much as he can to the first set so he did back off just a bit through there but now we're coming towards dunlop flat out flat out left-hander we go 
Nice done indeed. Now we come towards the end of the first set. It's going to be a 31.1 for him as he makes his way down to the first and second deck. There we go. You carry a lot of speed on the first deck there, but you're on the brakes on the second one. Now coming towards the chicane. What a straight line of breaking here into the chicane we go. Don't really, really hit the apex because it can sometimes not get you the best exits in terms of traction, but he manages it there. I usually take a higher line through there, but it, it all depends on your setup as well, how you approach that corner and how you get the throttle as well. As we make our way now into Spoon, we go, hit the apex very nicely to carry good speed, good rhythm. And let's see then, did lose the back end slightly, goes to the mid part there. Didn't really carry the speed as much as he wanted to in the second part of Spoon. Now coming towards the end of the middle sector, it's going to be a 10.6 for him. So not really on the pace of the top two as Nordus in the Aston Martin has gone for a flying lap here in qualifying. Now coming towards the chicane we go, the final two corners. And let's see how he does it there. Bit of a slow, and he's in the pit lane. Back off. Oh dear. Oh dear for, indeed, but... Is this going to be enough time for him to get in and out of the pit lane with two minutes I left to go? I don't think so. I don't think later it's going to be any. I don't think later has a bit of a chance really now because he's got to get the car in. Then they've got. Then you've got and after that. You got to get the tyres down. And then you got the preparation of starting the car to get the, get on get on track. It's, uh, if he does, he, he needs to absolute launcher on the outlap as well. I don't know. It, it's a close one, but I don't think it'll be a chance. Noldus at the moment is putting on the fly at the moment in P4. So that, so, so the, he's actually having a really good qualifying session. So that's who does round to Spoon. Sort of carries the speed through there, but he's even gets tight for this corner. That's very nice to meet entirely through there. Trying to go wide as he can through the second part, but let's see if it's going to be anywhere near the top three. It's going to be a, a 10.5. It's, it's his personal best. So let's see if he does round the chicane. It's a 10.5, that's a decent middle setter there from Noldus. Could he get over to P3? Bear, maybe he started his flying lap in the Red Bull. But here is Noldus there, making his way towards the finish line. It's last flying lap of the session. It's P2. Oh. What a fantastic lap of time from Noldus there. He really is developing as a driver. But can he stay there? Because he's still got the likes of Ramavaj, Bear, Emi, Martin and Dragon. By the way, it's a good qualifying there for Martin too in P5. But the rest of them are starting their flying laps. So let's go on board with Bear, Emi to see what he's doing. Two tenths up. I think in the first setter, very lovely indeed. Can he get himself in the 26ers? I wonder. Here he is in the Red Bull. A bit of traffic ahead of us. That's both Williams there, I think, on their outlaps. But his middle set is going to be a 10.2, as it says. That's a decent middle setter there for Bear Mimi. I think he's a 10th up on his previous best. Now coming towards the final two corners we go. That Williams needs to get a move on there. He's got about 10 seconds left to go in the session. And here he is coming through the Casio Triangle. We go. Gets a decent exit as well. No wheel spin. He's made his way towards the line now. It's going to be Paul at 20. 6.7 fantastic that time indeed oh mdj just made it to the line it's with four seconds to go but he has started this flying lap indeed i thought the williams was rogue smithy but it's actually mdj so he's lucky there to get over the line just in time and letting people go and leave it out very late but laser unfortunately along with his mclaren teammate will start at the back of the race then not really wants to be whatsoever but here is draugr goes up into p5 in the alpha tower next one to cross the line now is the Haas. and he goes up into p3 that's smoke wow smoke is doing wow, a fantastic what job what's qualifying from smoke there that is unexpected mdj is, is looking forward to Hundreds up, 42,000 of a second quicker than his previous. Martin is a tenth quicker in the te in, in the second sector. Well, yeah, the best part of the first sector, but he is coming towards the end of the second sector. Let's see if he does improve again. We've got the Aston Martin in the pit lane, I think, so that's the end of qualifying for him. That is Nordus, who went out there very early, comparison to others. But here comes a red ball coming towards the line now. That is Burmeister, unfortunately, stays there in P14. And now for a mayor, makes his way towards the line. That's Ramavaj, who goes up into P3 with a 26.9. His teammate crosses the line now. He stays where he is. That's Langfather. Martin is making his way towards the line, stays in P7. MDJ. Yeah, he's lost time during the second set, so I think Bear Riemann might snatch pole here, but MDJ needs a big final setter here. I do believe an Alpha Tyre is spun. There he is in the middle of the track. Not quite sure who that is, but here's MDJ making his way towards the line. Can he snatch pole? No, he caught us 27.0. So Bear Riemann, crucially for Red Bull, is on pole. Samid, who goes up into peace the end of the qualifying session but that Alpha Tari who was that it was a load of traffic there in the Casio Triangle and it was Atlas who made a mistake at the final two corners but can we just say a big massive shout out to Smoke unbelievable qualified that's his best qualifying of the season it is indeed and I remember him at Saudi Arabia where he got very close 
I think he uh, had his best result at the Mexican Grand Prix, I believe that was, if I'm looking at the right driver. But here is Berimi on pole. He won the last race. Can he do two in a row? Ahead of MDJ, ahead of Ramavaj in P3. Another strong qualifying from Ramavaj. But the standouts for me, like you said, Smoke and Noldus. Maybe Jagamal too in P7. I think I'm getting confused between Jagamal and Smoke. I think it was Jagamal who was up there in the last few races, not Smoke. I think Smoke was at the lower end of the field. But still, great qualifying from Haas. Jargon in P8 there in the Alpha Tire. Martin in P9. Langfell, 10th place. Zenum outside the top 10 in 11th place. Rogue Smithy in 12th. Atlas in 13th. Burmeister in 14th ahead of Lord Danny Boy. Sonic Hawk 16th. Mackett 17th. Laser, JDM and the Glock who should be... Yeah, he's had a qualifying bad, I think, but uh, we'll see what he can do with him on the back of the field. The two big hitters in the back there with J with Laser Glot. They got so much work to do go through the field because this uh, this track is a challenging circuit, but it can promote overtaking. There's a few spots to overtake on the track, but it's, you need to trust the other driver if they if they can give you the chance to overtake because. Well, let's just say the least. That this is division. This is division one. At the end of the day, loads of big hitters. At the, two big hits at the back. That'd be very interesting to see how that does. But we remember Harry Kane, literally in the last race, where he actually had a bunch of the sprint race, got himself into the roundabout where the top ten is, then promoted himself into the podium. So th those two don't have a sprint race. Well, let's see how it, they actually get on in the main race today. High chances of a safety car around here. It's very easy to make a mistake around this track. It's a punishing circuit, old school circuit like this one. Challenging curves, challenging corners, and very easy to lose grip indeed. So let's see if any safety cars come in today's race. You and... can also think about well as track limits as well. The, the, this is a track limited circuit as well. So pen time penalties will be a big, big thing as well. I don't think I picked a one warning in my race on Sunday. So uh, we'll see about the track limits because I've become consistent without getting track limit penalties anymore. So I've yeah, improved so, yeah. it to, I've improved really in terms of track limits because I used to get penalties all the time. But I started to improve recently on that one, especially challenging tracks like this in Singapore, Japan, Saudi Arabia too, Australia, Austria too, which is another one where track limits can be another brutal place. But... Um, yeah, it's it's very important this one because we saw a few penalties back in the Brazilian Grand Prix, albeit though one of the were for safety cars. But MDJ picked up a drive through penalty under the safety car, which really did cost him, and we got tight in the Discord session. So Glock has uh, a five second tire penalty applied to his race after he finishes. So yeah, uh, I see. Right, thanks for that, Dan. Thanks, I didn't need a memory to say the least. Um, comment section wise, have a look here. <laughs> Doran says you got to love Division 1. We, well, we all do, to be fair. Um, if there's a chance, Jamie, if you could be a reserve, you know, actually racing with the big boys, I could probably want to commentate one of your races one day. That'd be, that'd be quite fun to do. <laughs> so you can race with, with the big boys once again. Because you are competitively a fast driver. Oh, I'm pretty sure if I raced now, I would have been a pole because my PBs are 26.4 in qualified. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, I'll be on pole position right now, but obviously uh, I'm happy as comms. I love it. I love doing commentary and a bit of racing at the same time. Sometimes it's better to be on comms because it's quite stressful racing in the front of the field. It's it's not mm. really... I don't really find it fun racing the top, even though you fight for first, second and third. It's just very stressful having to make the right decisions and people spamming ERS, etc. and going for crazy moves and trying to stay within the DRS train as well in the early stages, but... I do, I do like to be in the commentary box, and race as well. Like just balance mm. it out between the two. They like they like uh, elbows out. <laughs> yeah, they sure do, Dan. They all do. They, all these drivers, all these nineteen to twenty drivers. That yeah, they all love to get their elbows out in in, in every single race they do. So let's see, let's see if they can get their elbows out today. What is Smoke going to do in P in that top five position? Can he actually maintain it? Uh, you know, get a really good decent result for the Haas team. Jagamal up there as well. So Haas can try and make the best result possible um, in this race. I mean, my our team at, at Haas, we we had a good fair race ourselves last night uh, with me finishing in P7 and Mansell finish in P2. So hopefully the Haas boys can convert their convert their results into a very good race. Well, qualifying results into a good race victory. Well, not race victory, good finishing results today. 
We've also got Dan saying, Miss Good Racing, Miss Good Racing, but I'm busy for, the, busy for stewarding. Yeah. That sounds about right to say the least. <laughs> These Division 1 guys are pretty feisty, but we that's why we love it, really. They are feisty indeed. They both have to secure their best result as well back at the Mexico Grand Prix. They both finished 6th and 7th, so that's their best results for Smoke. He's up into P3. It's this could be a podium, but has he got the race pace mentality? Because qualifying is one thing, race is another. We have got a race pace for 27 laps as well. It can be quite very difficult, but we'll see. But we're just waiting for this lobby to start. Then we can get racing once again. Right, man saw my teammate saying, come on, Hass. Well, I'm secretly, I'm being unbiased here. But if I'm going to be really biased, yeah, I will be supporting the Hass team as well. Um, Glock said, if I get a P7, P8, I'll be happy here. Hard to overtake around here with lots of, spit, with lots of spamming errors. Uh, lots of spamming errors, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's another thing as well. Errors is going to be another thing as well. Errors battery will be a massive thing as well um, around the circuit. It's a, another battery draining circuit. So that's another thing as well. Yeah, it is. I had trouble saving my ERS by not using a lot of it, but people in front do use to do use do like to lo love using it. That even makes sense. People do love to use it around here, even though they're not even progressing anywhere in that DRS trade, just trying to keep up with each other. But we'll see the tire allocations then. So look oh, at that. Smoke's gone for sauce. Four drivers on the softs, including the guys at the back. Clock is going for an aggressive strategy on those soft compound tires, trying to make as many places as he can before those tires drop off. Macket on the softs too, along with JDM in 19 place. What can Laser, Clock, JDM, and Macket do? from the back of the field there. Are there going to be any outliers in the midfield we're going to look out for too? We'll see. Can, does Drago have some decent pace in the Alpha Tire too? Because he has been there, thereabouts, scored a few podiums this season, has the Alpha Tire driver, but uh, he started to P8 right behind Jagermal, and both Hassers looking really strong, but Smoke on the soft compound tyres. Let's see if that's a good strategy for him. It's going to be a short stint, obviously, but we'll see if the safety car does come into effect here. MDJ has gone for the medium compound tyres, of course. Now, for in terms of strategy I had around here in Japan, I started on the hard compound tyres. A safety car came out on lap 6, only lasted for 2 laps. So I had to take the tyres 19 laps on those medium compound tyres with only one safety car at the very beginning. And my tyres were 82-84% and they were dead towards the end. So safety car can make or break people's races. And let's see where, where the pendulum swings when the safety car comes out. Another thing as well, that for Smoke, and of course the soft tire runners, especially for Smoke as well, he's going to be hoping and goal hanging for a safety car. If you think about it, if he, the safety car comes out early, goes towards the end of his stint, then you've got to think about, oh, you've got to think about, oh, hang on a minute, I can go on the hard tires here and stretch them out and throw out the durability at the end and maybe possibly goal hang for a second safety car or go on the mediums I'm really uh, on really go hang for a safety car at the uh, at the end part of the race to go back on the soft. So the soft tire runners they're going they're going to they're going to have to think on their feet here. But with the hard tire runners they they got an easy job to do with durability. They can stretch them out to the medians if they want to, or they can really do the the tire saving. They can then stretch out to the soft tire. But it's it's but the hard tire runners have got a good variety in this race. Soft medium is possible, but it'll be a big stretch towards the end of the Grand Prix too. And we'll see how many places Glock can make. So here is Bear Emi, second time on pole position this season, doing a great job so far, and hoping to score as many points as he can in the constructors. His teammate Burmeister is P14. His official teammate Harry Kane is not here tonight, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, he's going to lose a lot of points. So MDJ's job this race is try and get as many points as he can to extend that gap as well, because missing one race can be detrimental for the championship. Championship later on as well. With plenty of races left to go, but every race counts. So here we are on the grid then, awaiting the lights. There are the lights. Two, three, four, five lights. And we are underway for the Japanese Grand Prix. Baby, a bit sluggish on the start, but still stays ahead. MDJ is in second place. Shot. Smoke is up into P3s ahead of Ramavaj on those soft compound tyres. I was surprised MDJ did not make any progress there on those medium compound tyres. So he'll be looking to try and overtake as quick as he can. But here comes Ramavaj back on those hard compound tyres on Smoke then. So Smoke got, got him into turn one. But somehow Ramavaj got him back despite being two steps harder on the hard compound tyres. So he's back up into P3. Great start from him. And they've got more squabble in the midfield. Oh, then that's Atlas. 
He's down as a P20 now, has Atlas Scopus. My thing's been glitched, but uh, Glock's made up about four places already. So great start from him on those soft compound tires. JDM will be looking to follow through too on them soft compound tires. But Laser's still in 18th place there, hasn't gone anywhere so far. But MDJ is all over the back of Bear Rimi. Bear Rimi, though, is in a good place in P1. He knows he doesn't have to fight too hard against the MDJ as long as he stays within the DRS and doesn't let that Williams go because it's so easy to try to stay in DRS. So MDJ now needs to try and try and overtake take as much as can. Here comes back up the inside into Spoon already on those soft compound tyres. The Red Bull they're going up slight out wide. That's Burmeister but Mackie is up as a P13 ahead of Zeno who drops himself outside the top 10 but I believe MDJ is right behind. Now he's overtaken wheel to wheel in Spoon. Spoon sorry 130R and MDJ puts himself up to first place already. Has to capitalise on those pinning compound tyres to make his strategy work. JDM had a good big look at Glock there down the inside, but Glock down the inside, into the, into the chicane, taking on Zenon, and gets around the outside, brilliant work there for Glock, JDM's going to try and get around on the inside, because he's got them two on the soft compound tyre, so I'm going to go in towards the, towards the first corner, I think JDM has got him into the first turn, he has, JDM overtakes Glock, brilliant stuff there for JDM. Two places gained there after those two scuppled in the Casio chicane. Casino chicane, not casino. I actually forgot what it was called already, even though I've heard it plenty of times. But uh, JDM, they're making use of that. Get a better exit than those Isn't two. It Casio? Yeah, Casio. There we go, Casio. I don't know why I keep getting confused because I've, I've said it in commentary myself. I think Mackie and Burmeister are fighting. So there they are. And that's quite weird, you know. I think. Uh, Mackie made a mistake on the top of the hill because uh, Burmeister was behind him. Now it looks like Burmeister's second deck there has gone out wide and allowed JDM to make up another great position around the outside here. Into the hairpin we go. And um, Burmeister there just stays ahead. But actually, McLaren is left squabbling with the Mercedes of Glock once again. Look at that MDJ has pulled the gap of one second already. I think he maybe used a lot of ERS to try and pull away at these early stages of this Grand Prix. The gap is 1.2 now and he's left Bear Rimi in the clutches of Ronvaj. So that should be very important to watch out for too in this race. Can MDJ maintain that one second gap around here in Japan? We'll find out. If he can't, he'll be stuck with the Harvard of Bear Rimi for the rest of the race as well. There's Glock there in P14. I think JDM's lost a place now and Glock is all over the back of the Red Bull. We're going to make a move in the uh, chicane we go. No, he won't. He does go out wide, though. Does Burmeister might compromise his exit. Now Glock, once again, is all of the back of the Red Bull driver. DRS is enabled in this race. Ramavaj is super close towards the back of Bear Rimi, but Glock is up to P13. So that's, that's seven places gained in three laps already. So great start already there from Glock. He's got to really to, to, to maximize the hard tyres as JDM follows Glock. And, and he's gone past Burmeister now. He's there making the bunch of this soft compound, and now here we go. Glock and Road Sniffy. That could be very interesting now in this part of the race. Yeah, we've seen what happens when a Williams and Mercedes squabble. And here is Glock all over the back of Rogue Spitty, both on different tyre compounds, of course. Rogue is on the medium compound tyres, the mid-range tyres, but Jagamal has been overtaken. Jagamal's lost places, he's actually got for wind oh, damage. No. He might have hit the wall on the exit, I'm not quite sure, but he's fallen down yeah, into P13. Oh, look at this, big massive, look at this! Big massive squabbled under here as Glock overtakes Rogue Smithy and gets him! Brilliant stuff, it's a massive squabble in the midfield at the moment. Yeah, there is. Ever since uh, that incident from Jagermal, it caused a massive Constantino effect with all these guys bunched up. So some of these places have been swapped now. Uh, JDM's ahead of Jagermal. Jagermal, who's running inside the top 10. I'm not quite sure if he made contact with somebody or went off in the second deck there and broke his wings. But however, the outcome is, we'll have to make a pit stop with the lack of, da the lack of downforce around here. Burmeister all over the back of Jagermal. Should be an easy move in the 130R, which it is. And here down the inside goes Mackie, but there's not a space to go down the inside. Glock is trying to defend. Rogue Smithy goes off the track at the chicane there. Not quite sure if Glock had broke himself or didn't leave him any space. But here we are once again. They both got DRS. Here comes JDM. Very feisty drivers of D. Look at the background. Jakobal stayed out there. Surprised at that damage from Wing. But here comes Rogue Smithy on Glock again as we head down towards Turn 1. Glock swoops around the outside. Can he maintain the outside line? Does he have the grip and speed to go around the outside? Yes, he does. Great defense there from Glock. He stays in P11 for the time being. So that's P. 20 to P11 I think or P19 to P11 because some people also didn't have a lap time in qualifying that's yeah he started 20th place so he's up to P11 in four laps incredible stuff indeed from Glock yeah definitely you got to say JDM's having a really good fine race as well starting from the back there he's been struggling the past few weeks but he's really having he's having a good go and look at Ramavaj now closing it on Bear Rimi and look at MDJ he's really checked out at the front and Ramavaj Right now, it's giving Ben Rimi one hell of a headache at the front. 
Bearing me though, might have to pay the patient game. He knows the advantage will spring back his way. So we're going to be very patient as Bearing me though, but he has one advantage all over the back of him. Or well, those two try and trade DRS, I wonder. JDM is ahead of Rogue Smithy, but they could see their battle. They've, bit, they've had a bit of a crop of these two at the Mexican Grand Prix, but Ramafarch has gone for the move on Bearing me. That's before 130R, and he puts himself into second place then ahead of the Red Bull driver. The Red Bull driver will have to DRS the back of him, so will he get him back into turn one, or will he wait and be patient for the rest of the race to try and follow him in that DRS? But Ramavaj had an excellent drive coming out of the of the of the chicane there, so he's probably be safe. Yeah, he's safe for now. And Berry was not using any of his his ERS. He knows he's going to play the patient game as Noldus gets past Samad. Both Noldus and Smoke are having one of the best races of the SFR season so far. And Smoke is still hanging in there with the guys in the top three, well, the top two really, with because the second and third. But he'll know his tyres will fall away and he'll probably have to go on the hard tyre going towards the end of this race. But right now, Smoke and Noldus having a really good race so far. Can Noldus get himself in DRS range of Smoke? If he does, he'll get himself in close contention of the front runners there in P2 onwards. So let's see if Noldus has the pace to catch him. He should do. He already get about a few tenths already in the first set to alone. The gap is 1.1 .1 now between himself and Smoke. Without, without being in the dirty air, Noldus does have the downforce trying to get closer and closer, but it looks like a Ferrari driver. I've seen him, unfortunately, has gone for a spin of the second deck. So that's the second victim we've seen there at the second deck. It's such a fast speed corner heading to first deck there is the second one. It can catch people out, especially on the outside curb. I've been caught out many times on the outside curb there, but uh, unfortunately he's gone for a spin on the outside of it, and um, he's mm. fallen down into 18th place there. Jagerbao is in P20, so he did go for a pit stop, but one lap too late. Unfortunately, he's done in 20th place, so we hope for a safety car now. MDJ, the gap is 2.3 between himself and Ram Ramavaj. Ramavaj not really able to uh, try and get the gap down. Legfell and Martin are very close together. As we head towards the chicane for those guys there. Martin is outside the DRS range of Draugen. He's got loads of cars right behind. Langfell, Mackett, and also his teammate Glock there. Here comes the Alfa Romeo driver of Langfell. Goes to the inside line. And here comes Mackett too. Two for one. And Martin there falling down into P10. Then he's starting a great position. He's down into P10. Rokesmithy and JDM once again fight as we head into turn two. These two drivers have been in contact before. But Rokesmithy around the outside. Does he get the move? Done? JDM trying to stick his nose in there. But he can't quite do so and Rokesmithy is up into P12 and here comes his teammate Laser who goes up the inside too great move indeed capitalised on that really well did Laser there up to 13 plays can he follow Rokesmithy yeah he, he, right now I think JD did the wise thing really letting his teammate through but he's got no need to cover off Burmeister so at the moment it's all looking okay for the McLaren team with Laser doing his best to catch up to the, to the top guys while the top guys at the moment with Ramavaj still ahead, only just of Bear Remy. Oh, so there's a spinner! Sort of... Oh, what, the... what happened? JDM just lost traction out the hairpin. Oh, no! Yeah, JDM just lost traction out of the hairpin there. Hit the hit the um, wall with his front wing, so we headed back into the pit lane for a front wing change. So Smoke is now actually falling behind these guys now. He's almost out of DRS, so and Noldus, he's actually out of DRS, so Noldus is going to be sniffing at the back of the hat. Is Nold is Smoke's tyres have gone here at the early stages of the race? Is it five laps? The maximum life of these tyres, I wonder. You can see the back, the back of the car just flashing. Here comes Barry Me on the Alfa Romeo driver and puts himself back into second place. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Yes, he is. Romavaj is also derated down the straight too. I did see the flashing light at the back of the car. So, and here comes a more scrap battle. That's for Red Bull taking advantage of a Williams and the McLaren too, or trying to. He goes up the inside of both of them. That's a great move from Burmeister to overtake Rogues with the and Laser there. Great move indeed. He puts himself up into P12. Brilliant move. It's Glock now. It's all over the. It's on the back of his teammate of Martin. So let's see what the Mercs will do at this stage of the race. What's Martin going to do? Is he going to let his teammate through, or is he going to let his teammate probably help out his teammate with ERS charging? But that's a very interesting strategy. In what Mercedes is going to do? But Samad is all over the back of the Aston Martin of Noldis. And oh, it's all loads of fights going on here. And Smoke's leading a train now from P4 down to looks like P7 at the moment. Yeah, his soft compound tyres have dissipated, unfortunately. So 
Let's, are you going to have a lack of performance there? I thought Maki would go for an inside lunge up into Spoon, but it wasn't quite close enough. I expected his tyres to fade away too. But now Smoke has out, he's been outside the DRS range. Nordus and Samad have caught up to him. And Nordus then, they need to overtake him immediately so they don't lose too much time. Both proceeded to swap positions. I think Martin is now demoted down into P11 behind his teammate Glock. And here comes Samad on Nordus then. That's like the chicane. Fires to move indeed. He puts himself up into P5. Does the RP driver and Mack it as well in the other Alpine. Went for a move again. Oh, it's the second Alpine there going for a move in the chicane. But here we are. It could be mighty close down the straight between the Haas, Alpine, Aston Martin and Alphatari. But they stay in formation for the time being as we head towards turn one and turn two. Laser is ahead of Burmeister. Puts himself up into 12th place. And he's left Rogue Smithy as well for good measure. And uh, let's see what's happening in the midfield. They're all close together in the midfield. However, MDJ at the front continues to pull away. So right now, at this moment of time, we've got loads of fights going on. The same DJ is right around, right around three seconds as Langfell lost the rear end and blocked with absolutely brilliant on the brakes there. The miss is not to crash into the back of Langfell because he lost at the, at the end of the essence there, but actually caught the car well. But this is good got This is what got now because right now, Macket is pulling away. He needs to get past Langfell as soon as he can here. Yes, he is, and you can see Clock just start broke himself in the hairpin there. I wonder if he's struggling also on those degrading soft compound tyres. However, Smoke is still in P4. He hasn't been overtaken yet by Samuel or Nodis, albeit though those two did have a scrap at the chicane, so might have lost a bit of time towards Smoke. And you can see Dragon also looking very close and interesting there too. And out of the spoon hairpin, out of the spoon corner we go. So I think I did see Glock go out wide there, but Sam is all over the back of smoke. Let's have a look what he's going to do. He's going to go around the outside, but I think they both slowed down on purpose to see if they could get the DRS, but that's going to be so close and so tight there. Sam is just ahead, and here comes Nordus too. We'll make a move on the Haas tyres. His tyres are starting to go, and um, Jargon might take advantage too. Now they go wheel to wheel on the straight. Jargon might make it three abreast, or try and make it smart and think about it, but the Haas not ready to give up there as we head to turn one. Jargon is going to go around the outside into one and two can he make it stick there around the outside yes he can oh notice there gets out of shape it's turn two had to slow down but thankfully Jalga did not hit the back of him because that could have been very nasty indeed so we're now eight laps in for the soft tyres now so is now the soft tyres now going to start to fall away now because if you can think about it they could probably go an, another lap now before they can really fall off the cliff but as you can see on the timing screen Smoke is now falling away, Mackett's now falling away, Glock still holding his own, only just, but Langfell still keeping the tabs with Glock. So when are these are they going to come in? Are they going to come at this lap or the next? Because right now Glock kind of came out of shape there, coming out the hairpin there. So, is the soft tyres now starting to degrade? They had a good first stint, is Glock at the moment. But is it time to come in for to come in for the hard tire or even the medium compound tire? <laughs> That's another decision they need to make here. Might be a bit too early to go on the medium compound tires. Might want to stretch it out a bit unless they want to go on the hard compound tires, of course. But uh, we'll see what those three do in seventh, eighth, and ninth. We're going to go into the pit lane on a set of hards or mediums. Laser ahead of Martin at 130R again. So we all start to see some moves in Spoon, Hairpin, and 130R. Incredible stuff indeed. But they all, there we are. Spoke is in the pit lane there to get rid of his soft compound tyres. Will it be the hards or will it be the mediums? But Ramavaj is all over the back of Bermi once again. I think he's trying to conserve his DRS there because he was quite low. So the best thing for him is to just stay behind Bermi. He uses DRS. Hard tyres for Smoke. Fall for Smoke there. They can go mediums from now. This they can. And Martin is all over the back of Burmeister into the S section we go, but still not close enough to make a lunge there on Burmeister. But uh, he's gone on the hard compound tyres, I think, for safety because the, the mediums can go towards the end, but they'll be hanging off the cliff if they do. 17 laps is a bit too much of a, on the medium compound tyres, unless you're a really good tyre saver, of course. But here we are. Ramavaj all over the back there. I think Bear me now has to use this tyre to his advantage to try and close in and bring that deficit down. MDJ starts to show some really good pace on those medium compound tyres. He's broke away from the DRS, built up a decent gap, ready when he goes onto the hard compound tyres towards the end of the Grand Prix. Maybe the softs, but that'd be a big strategy there if he does do so. He does have the advantage so far in P1, looking very comfortable indeed in the Williams. A triple free race, be said from MDJ after being in a massive scrap in the last few races in that DRS train finally broke through from it 
but we'll see if we can maintain this lead. Anything could happen during this Grand Prix with the safety cars coming out. But bear me once again is under pressure from Ramavaj behind. Sam is not able to catch up. He's in a bit of a scrap from his by himself with Nordis and Draugen there in P4. But once again, it's another strong race with Samid. Bearing is out of shape at the exit of the chicane there, so Ramavaj might be closer, but I don't think he wants to go through for a move. Yes, he does Clock's then. Clock's in. Clock's in. Will this be the media compound tyres or the halls? Let's have a look. Let's have a look there. And somebody spun at the uh, chicane there. I think that was a Ferrari I saw. The clock's on the hard compound tyres, so he feels that the mediums can't go towards the end. So the only driver to pit now from the soft tyres is the Alpine of Mackett. So right now, Glock is going to try and get. He's definitely going to get those tyres to the end for sure. Laser is doing a fine job now. He's in P8 now because the soft tyre runners are pitting at this moment in time, but he's now currently 2.2 seconds behind uh, of Mackett now, where he's got Langfell all over the back of him. So the Alfa Romeos are not doing too badly at all. Can Laser close down on Mackett as soon as he can? As Draugen and Nolis and Saman are currently in a good fight now for P4. I'm also noticed that P3 of Bear Imi is outside the DRS range. He was in the first two sectors, but uh, he started to get himself back in there, so he lost a bit of pace towards Romavaj. We've got another yellow flag down there. Is that now for... Is that Aston Martin or Haas? I'm not quite sure who yeah, it is. Uh, looks like the Aston Martin Sonic Hawk has lost a couple of places. And also lost an M-Play too, so it must have been him out of the second Degna too, unfortunately for him. You have to make a trip to the pits because uh, having no end player around here is just very difficult to deal. It's like a shopping trolley, really. You can't turn it in fast speed corners. But here we are on board with Nordis then all over the back of Samid. And Barry, he's just kept himself in DRS range. But look at that, Dragon all over the back of him. Yeah, Nordis was, uh, had lost, uh, lost all the trash he needed going out to there, but here he comes now towards the end of the straight. This is going to be three wide going to turn one, and Draugen gets out, gets out of the way. Nordis actually makes the position even though he's lost it, lost trash in the chicane. Well done to Nordis. Yeah, great job from all three of them not making contact there. I thought that Draugen would make it three abreast, but he didn't, and um, I think uh, Sammy lost the place in the process there. Sonic Hall gets a far place. So far as he can tap on for speeding in the pit lane unfortunately after breaking his wing but this is a trusty Mac race for stopped, people by the way Mac is stopped for the mediums and also um, uh, Sammy lost the place in the first deck now so that's an unconvenient place to overtake there unconventional overtaking place but uh, he has lost the place he's fallen down into P6 and however Bear Emi is struggling to get himself in the DRS range he keeps hovering out a second now and then he's 9 tenths behind now but he looks like he's struggling on those hard compound tyres it seems Ramavaj has definitely got some decent pace in the Alfa Romeo it's now currently just over a second now it's just hovering in it it's Bear Rimi's doing all he can, but MDJ is absolutely flying at the moment. He's nearly, he's like five seconds from hitting the five second barrier. Right now, when it comes to do, to, do, um, to the um, to the pit stops, I'd say that MDJ is to be very comfortable when it comes to the first round of stops coming in, because he's got the gap he needs. But look at this, he got to smack it over taking Zenon, going into uh, the R30, 130 yard as Smoke is making place at the moment as Rogue Smith and Martin Pitt where's Smoke going to be after the first round of the pit stops then and uh Oh, Langfell's there getting very wide out of turn one, defending from Burmeister. Laser did overtake Langfell as well. So let's see where Rogue Smithy and Martin rejoin. They go on the mediums for Martin. I presume the hearts for Rogue Smithy also strategy, although Rogue Smithy got a horrible exit, but that was a bit of a lag there from Rogue Smithy. So they both pitted on different tyres, and let's see them. It can Rogue Smithy. Martin, they both could take the tyres towards the end. They're very close to the track, but let's see if they can take the tyres towards the end. Well, I think they can, obviously, but. Uh, Rogue Smithy might be in a better strategy in comparison to Martin. Yeah, so Glot now, he's on the back of Smoke now. He's going to make all the progress he can for his championship. He's going to look down the inside and he's dead number one. And look at that, Mackett. Oh, Lord Danny Boy is dead number one. You don't normally see people overtaking there. But few people have tried in this race and pulled off. So Lord Danny Boy up into P11 now. Glock going for a move on the hairpin, trying to overtake Smoke. Let's see if he gets a better exit out of here. 
Glock just gets a decent exit, but they remain will to wheel and now use the battery smoke. Seems to stay ahead of the Mercedes driver. He's used a lot of ERS too. You can see the overtaker button on his steering wheel there. Wanted to stay ahead of the Mercedes there. I know Glock likes to usually run high downfall setups. I, I know that because I've got a special up sheet. Uh, he sent me a setup that he does run, love to run high downfall setups. But uh, Drow Grid is in the pit lane then to get off those hardcore part tires a bit early. But I think he maybe tried to do the undercut of the guys ahead. Very strategic gaze there for Dragon as as Smoke now. Oh, Glock was trying to get on a move on the outside of Smoke, but didn't work out for him. Can Smoke get the drive now to get the overtaking on Voltaire before 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 Glock overtakes him? And here comes Smoke on the Ferrari. Here comes Glock on the Ferrari too. Out of the pit lane comes Dragon. Now that might not be a great decision for Dragon because I think he was trying to undercut the orders of Samid. But he rejoins behind three cars, so the undercut may not be effective for Dragon there being stopped behind these guys. He needs to dispatch these guys as quickly as he can, otherwise he'll lose a lot of time towards Nordus oh, and Samuel. Glock around the outside! Glock around the outside here! Oh, what a move for Glock! Nicely done! Hello, Yuki Tsunoda! And also, Dragon in the alpha tire made a move on uh, Lord Daddy Boy with the inside in the Dunlop area but yeah great move indeed from Glock made it work around the outside you don't really see drivers going side by side on the same tyres on the same age roughly doing that move but Glock was very committed there around the outside lovely move indeed and got past the uh, hash driver but Dragon needs to dispatch these guys as quickly as he can to try and stay in the fight between himself Nordus and Samid will those two pit towards the end of this lap I wonder try and undercut prevent the undercut from happening by Dragon. Let's see what they do as they make their way towards the chicane right now. Bear with me has pitted and here comes Nordus and Samid. They both stay out. I think they recognised that Dragon is in a bit of traffic so they might stay yeah, out for one more lap. I'm surprised you know that uh, MDJ on the mediums is staying out there. The guys on the halls are pitted earlier than the guys on the mediums. MDJ is going to be absolutely loving this right now. His top runners rivals are right now currently pitting. He's just going to be more of a gap he wants to make out front. Ramavaj is currently five seconds ahead. Where's Dragon in all of this? When the stops are coming in, as he undercuts any of his rivals, Sonic Hawk is for time uh, in the session. Safety cars out! Safety cars out! Oh! Okay! Safe. So Nays is going to take advantage of this because he made an absolute brick. Told you there was no hanging for a safety car. Where is Laser right now? Yeah, Laser's in P5. He's still out there. That's worked beautifully in his favours. But I think it's benefited Samid, Noldus, Ramavaj, and obviously MDJ in P1 there. So it's benefited so drivers. But we'll see then. They got to adhere to the safety car line. I think Barry Me is at a disadvantage there in P6. I think Ramavaj yeah. will come out ahead of him. Yeah, exactly. So the, 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 the top six has got a free pit stop out of this. I'll tell you what, MDJ. It could have come at a better time from his tires must be hanging on the cliff. And I tell you now, he'll be absolutely loving this right now. He gets a free pit stop to go onto the hard compound tires. Or even that, can he actually try and go on the top? So he, they've got him for over 10 laps left, so let's see what he does. Maybe it's the soft compound tires. He's managed to make the mediums last this long, and let's see what he does then. It's makes his way into the pit stop of the Williams at the very end of the garage obviously 2023 they did finish last I think in the constructors it, it was actually it was actually Haas sorry not uh, Williams I think Williams scored in 7th or 8th there but yeah it's the soft compound tyres and Norris has pitted as you expect all these drivers are going to pit obviously it's a no brainer to pit ah. that's that's interesting because MDJ is now pitched for, he's, he's gone for soft but the rest of the drivers have gone mediums have a look at this. The soft tires are going to the end. Have a look at this. And Barry me gets ahead of Samid. So he gets in between them both. Nordus is up into P3. That pit stop has really cost Barry me because he wasn't involved in this battle between himself, Nordus, and Samid. He was with Ramavaj. But now the safety cars came out, it's cost him a potential P3. So, oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. Like, what, what race was it where he got to fence by pit stop? I think it was the Mexican Grand Prix where he dropped all the way back in the field. I think it was Baku 2 when that happened. But uh, Laser, it benefits him a lot. He's up into P6 now. What can he do towards the end of the race? I, I don't know, to be honest. It, it, can the soft tyres can really get to the end? I mean, they'll go about 8 to 10 laps. So, oh, I don't know. It's pushing it, to say the least. But I, I think NDJ can do it. But he does need to make an unsaleable gap from the drivers behind so he can get away 
and make those tyres go to the end because those tyres those tires he's got on now will degrade very, very quickly. We haven't seen a dominant drive from MDJ like this for a long time. And here he is in Japan leading this race but still got a lot of work to do in the last 10 or 11 laps of this Grand Prix. Can he hold on? I think the soft compound tyres will be screaming towards the end of the Grand Prix. We'll see. Glock managed to make him 8 or 9 laps but... Um, We'll see if the guys in the mediums too will take advantage. Nordus, his highest position ever here in SFR in Div 1, doing a fantastic job. His best finish came from the Brazilian Grand Prix in P5. He's up into P3 right now. Can he defend this position? His race pace seems to be getting better and better. I agree. And if he can do so, if he can take down Ramavaj, and if MDJ's tyres do degrade at the end, um, if, if they do, you never know, Nolders can actually win a Division 1 race here. It's going to be a tall order if MDJ does pull away, but it depends how long those those tyres will degrade, because we're under 10 laps, we're around where the 11, we've got 11 laps to go in the Scrum Prix, including the last lap, technically it's 10, but we count the last lap. So, if Nolders can get past Ramavage, this will be his first SFR victory since Division 2 and be his first victory in Division 1. That will be an amazing, amazing result for Nolts. Or if he just wants to play a safe and go for the podium, that will even be a good result for him as well. So he needs to play his cards right here. Yeah, and also Bearing is also a very quick driver as well. So will Bearing be get the better of him in terms of pace, or can Nolts hold on to? But uh, however, either way, it's been a very, very good drive from Nolts. He should be very impressed there. His race pace is definitely getting better. Hopefully, we can see more of this on Nolts from the future too. Are we going to see Nolts in F1 in the new F124 gate coming out? Well, we're going to see Nolts again in Division One because of course the new Hanley models will come in and everything else. So. All the drugs you see in Division One right now, I would say a good, a good fair few will be staying in this division, but, but we could see some changes coming into next season. But that's F1 24, 24 in in the month's time. We're, we're right now in F1 23, but yeah, oh I don't know. Can Ben Remy? I think Ben Remy has got the pace to take down this lot. Laser is he's got to make a monster drive out of this. He, that yeah. safety car has really helped him for the championship. It has indeed, and also Laser hasn't had his first podium since the Hungarian Grand Prix, since the third race of the season. He looked you, on form. You have been documenting that, haven't you? Yeah, he has. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I have actually, but uh, it's just a big reminder because we know he's got the capabilities of doing it, but he just can't seem to piece it together. He's just been t in the top five majority of the races, and the safety car is in at the end of this lap, so about to see some more racing action between these guys, but MDJ should have the advantage on the soft compound tyres. He needs to capitalise them on these early stages. There is a beautiful shot. Ah, oh, that's a lovely shot there, the safety car going in, and the guys approaching the, Cas the Casillo. Why do I keep forgetting the final chicane? I don't, I don't know why. I'm usually good with quarter numbers and names, <laughs> but this one always catches me out. But anyways, MDJ is crawling. He'll decide when to go, which is right now. Pulls the trigger right now. Has Remavaj got a decent restart? He's all over the back of him. Look at the RP of Sabid. All over the back of Bear Ruby too. As we head to, head towards turn number one, is anybody going to make a lunge into turn one? We go. No, they're not. They're going to stay behind. But Burmeister is quite close towards driving I'm a corner. Who's We've got that? Rick Smith, he sp spins it, and that, who's he tagged with? That's Martin. I think those two have made contact. Oh dear, it was looking good for Martin and Rogue Smith too, but unfortunately they both made contact. Mercedes and Williams make contact again, but it's two different drivers this time. So what we got at the moment then, we got we got Laser again under pressure here by Draugen, but He's, he's starting to fall away a little bit slightly away. MDJ, what's his... Right now, his pace has got to be absolutely sensational. We've got Mackin losing the rear end there. He's going to give Glock an absolute massive invitation to see if he can get past him. But it looks like Mackin's got a really good drive going the hair pin. As we got Burmeister, he's now on the back of Draugen. But what's MDJ going to do? He's got to check away from the front. He's got to break away DRS this lap and then pull away. 
Yes, he has indeed. Well, my was super close to one, but MDJ has the tire advantage on those soccer power tires. There's Burmeister looking to make a lunge. Before 130 on, Chodralkin is demoted down into eighth place, and Burmeister looking to make great progress as well in the second red ball. But Ramafaj, can he hold on to the cap of one second? The MDJ sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix at 28.2. But Ramavaj is on the hunt. There's Nordis and P3 keeping close taps with Ramavaj. Ramavaj is trying to get himself in the DRS range. He's nine tenths away, one second away. I wonder if he's used a lot of battery too. I think he is. Let's have a quick look at his battery. Yes, he has. So he's used a lot of battery trying to get close, but it's not close enough. Now, Nordis, he's going to play a wise game here because when the DRS comes in, he's going to be sticking to the back of Ramavaj to see if he can stick with the pace of Ramavar to help him get a good result but Bear Remy is going to give him one absolute headache in the Red Bull because he's going to give him he's going, he's going to play a very wise game what's Laser going to do here he has got to make absolute gains here on these top five here because he's finished every single top five and it's at re very much recently and uh, his last win was Spain we got a spinner that's Mackett Mackett's gone yeah, at the hairpin, that is. Not quite sure if he made contact with anybody or lost it by himself. But uh, unfortunately, he's gone for a spin. Another driver uh, that's won this season, I think it was the Austrian Grand Prix, when it was a very cutting race on the final lap. Mackie stayed out of very old tyres and somehow managed to win the Grand Prix when the seat car came out. But here is MDJ. The gap is already 1.3 seconds away. He's broke away from DRS, but will he have to pay the price later when these soft compound tyres start to degrade? We already saw about six or seven laps in the Grand Prix. A few drivers were starting to struggle with those soft tyres. DRS has been enabled, but obviously Ramavaj is not close enough to open that DRS. He has to watch out behind him, and Nordis is right behind Ramavaj as well. Nordis, he's a, Nordis has to use a bit of a fair bit of his battery. He gives a little bit out of shade there, going out of turn two, but Bear Reem is going a little bit more closer now. He looks a lot more closer to Nordis. The Nordis is close to Ramavaj, so Ra very be on the prowl here for P3. I'm not quite sure how many league races Nordis does, but this is the highest I've ever seen him in a league race, and the pressure will be on on his shoulders. He's got to keep it nice and clean, got to keep it on the black stuff indeed. Got to try and make sure he stays in DRS with Ramavaj. At least he has the DRS to protect himself from bearing me there. Or he could try and overtake Ramavaj in the later stage of the Grand Prix too. So at least he has that advantage. But I wonder how he can stay calm and composed because if I'm on the podium for the first time, my nerves will be all over the place. I remember my first time when I thought I was on the podium. My goodness me, even my first victory. My word, my nerves are going through skyrocketing through the roof. I'll tell you that for a fact, it's a horrible, horrible feeling going towards the final 17 laps. But here we go, but here we go, the top few drivers now, they're all close together. This is it, DRS is enabled, this this lap, and now this is where we're taking. You can see that Bear Remy is forcing Nordus to overtake Ramavaj there. He's getting closer and closer. They've both burned through the ERS. Second and third, second and third have are derated. Here comes Nordus. Will he overtake Ramavaj on this straight? Or will he stay behind him? Yes, he does. He goes for a move. He goes up into second place ahead of the Alfa Romeo driver. And Draugr is up into seventh ahead of Burmeister. Puts himself back ahead of the Red Bull. Further down, Smoke is ahead of Lord Danny Boy. And here comes his teammate Yagamal. Both Hassas there who started inside the top 10 are now currently P11 and P12 had great qualifying, but unfortunately, I think the safety car did catch him out indeed as well. But uh, that's the top front then. So, Nord has put himself in second place there ahead of Ramavaj. And I wonder how much ERS that um, bearing me used as well because he was really gaining rapidly on that straight. Oh, look at that Samuel Ryder and Laser has took advantage of that second tender. Laser is now going to P5 now. Simon just scored a podium last season here in Japan. Now he's done his tick place after a small mistake at the second deck. Now it's a very easy place. That's the third or fourth drive that we've seen getting caught out of the second deck. You carry a lot of speed through the first deck there. Into the second one you go. You can be very careful on the brakes too and not hit the inside curb too much. Too much. I'm not quite sure what he did. Or probably lost at the outside curb there. You can get uh, lost of traction through there too. But here's Ronvaj all over the back of orders once again. And obviously we'll wait for the DRS there, not go for any irrational moves as we make our way now towards the final chicane we go. Nordis is the leader of this DRS. Bear me wants this podium back after being caught out by the safety car as we head towards the finish line now. Ramavaj looks very close to overtake Nordis indeed. Here he is, the DRS wide open. Will Bear me follow through? He's a bit too far about to do so. Ramavaj will take second place away again. 
We got Diagabel actually overtaking his teammate Smoke now. They've gone through. Glock has made another position. He's up into Knife now. He's behind the Burmeister now. But what's Laser gonna do? Because right now he's currently in this championship fight at the moment. And Rogue Smith gets a three second time penalty. So he's got a few guys on a penalty at the moment. Only three. But what's Laser gonna do, Jamie? He's got to make progress in he for his championship, isn't he? Yeah, but me stuck in the DRS trade, it's just super hard to overtake because I had the same scenario being in that position in DRS trade. It's just so hard to overtake because you're carrying the same speed on the straight. And uh, it's up to these guys to make a mistake or go side by side and capitalise because the only way I got on the podium last time was people making mistakes in front of me. Two or three drivers had to make another pit stop due to puncher and also people spin each other out too. So that's the only way I got on the podium. But yeah, what can Laser do? Does he have to straight? Oh, Nordus! He's picked oh, up a three second no. time on the team. He's got out wide I through knew Spoon. That was gonna happen. He's got out wide through Spoon. And now bearing me is up to P3. What a shame there from Nordus. An easy place to get caught out indeed. Oh, that's such a shame. But here comes Glock on the back of Burmeister. He, Glock is also in his contention for this championship at the moment. He's, he's, he knows very well that MDJ is leading the race by some margin. 2.8 at the moment. But Glock is really trying to make progress now. He's all over the back of that Red Bull. Can he make the progress in more? No. What about Laser? We've got yellow flag for the moment. That's Rogue Smithy again having making a mistake. Yeah, it's down at the exit of the chicane there. And let's see if he boxes to put on a bonus set of softs and try and take the fastest lap of the way from whoever's got it right now. But uh, the gap is three seconds between Ramavaj and MDJ. Rogue Smithy has retired in the pit lane, so we won't see any more of him, unfortunately. And he's out of the race. But uh, yeah, it's a difficult track around here in Japan. But the four laps left to go in this race. Can Ramavaj catch MDJ? I'm not quite sure. He's probably a bit too far away for good measure. So MDJ has got this in the bag. Unless he picks up a three-second time penalty or makes any mistakes. He wasn't penalty-free in Brazil. He caught a lot of them. But this time he's caught Eddie. Glock's got up the inside of Burmeister in that hairpin. Very lovely move indeed. He puts himself up into eighth place there. And he's second away from Dragon too. So hopefully he can get himself a DRS rate to catch up with the rest of this pack. So MDJ 2.7 now, the gap is hovering around the 3 second margin, is that going to be enough when his tyres do degrade, because it's, we are coming to the stage now JB, where the soft tyres are going to be on their limited life now, when when they do drop off, so we're coming towards that stage now. We are indeed, the offset of the tyres start to come in, and I think Ramavaj at this stage should be able to close in. But he's got Bear in me and Nordus all over the back of him as they got DRS right behind. There is Laser 2 looking. And we can see Bear in me up into P2. He overtakes Robert Vargas to go into 1 and 2. But surely their tyres should be better than the soft compound tyres in first place. 8 laps for the softs. They're not dead, but they're not, they're, not, they're not good either. So they should be able to catch up towards MDJ bit by bit. I tell you what, MDJ is not going to like the sight of a red... Uh, uh, not of a red ball coming out towards his rear view mirror very soon. Martin gets his three second time penalty for multiple warnings. That's four drivers now that's on three second time penalties. 3.4 MDJ is doing an absolute stellar job at the moment. But you've got to think about the other drivers behind him that are, that are fighting and are for podiums. Right now, these drivers don't fight now. They can close the gap to MDJ. But of course, these drivers want their opponents. They want to get maximum points possible for their team. And their driver's points for the champion in, in all around the championship table at the moment. It's a great recovery from Bear Ruby too, who got caught out by the pit stops. He's back up into B2, but the job's not done yet because he's still got Ramavaj to hold off and Nordus too. Although he's got a three-second time penalty, and Laser is all over the back. And Laser gets so close, but yet so far to try and get a podium. But anything could happen in this Grand Prix. And Bear Ruby still leads. Well, Bear is the de leader of this DRS trade. A very uncomfortable lead indeed. And here comes Nordus up the inside. At the chicane, he's probably thinking he's got nothing to lose. There's Alpha Tari in the background. He's got the track there. I'm not quite sure. I think it was Dragon. Dragon. It was Dragon, but I'm not quite that, sure what he did. That, that's Glock. That's Glock coming up towards him as well. So Glock is going to get, wants every single bit of this fight. But look what this, look at this. Five drivers going for a move here. Ramavaj down the inside of Bear Remy and gets the move done. And there's Laser versus Samid. Samid's back up into P5. There's a Ferrari again who spun at the exit of that chicane there. That's 
Zenon once again is in the pit lane and uh, yeah it's not been a great race for him as he finished I think he started in P11 in qualifying there but he's in the pit lane right now and let's see if he retires or puts on a set of softs to try and go for the fastest lap of the Grand Prix but MDJ is still extending the gap in front despite being on old soft compound tyres this has been incredible from MDJ exactly because all these drivers behind him look at this all the way down to Glock they're all fighting away at the moment this is just helping MDJ extend the gap no this has gone very wide there and Ben Remy ghosted for a second but here we go, all these drivers now, we are going to the final stages, this is when hectic starts at the moment, this is where all the hectic will start. I think Noldus tapped the back of Bear with me, which caused him to ghost, and Samid was able to get a pass Noldus. Noldus has probably cost himself, well, he has cost himself a podium because he got through the contability, but I think Samid's in the best place now in P4, although, here comes Laser now, side by side, he to 130R, he goes up into fifth place ahead of Noldus there. And there's Samid ahead of us. Can Laser get himself on the podium with about three laps to go in this race? We're on lap 26 now of the Grand Prix. We're almost there. The battle for P2 is on between Ramafaj, Bayumi, and Samid. As and Nolus. you can see, has gone past Nolus as well. So Nolus drops down another place. As he probably lost focus due to that 3 second time penalty, did he get to a head? I'm not quite sure. Usually when you get a 3 second time penalty, you do start to uh, lose a bit, uh, well, a bit of rhythm, a bit of time as well because of that penalty frustrating you. And we've got a spinner further down as well, that's, pop, that's an alpha tally I think. Oh, it's both of them. A JDM and Alice Scopo. So they make contact down there at turn 2. And uh, they're down in 16th and 17th place. But the main battle is for P2. Rumovac is in P2. He's got Barry right behind him. Samit is trying to go for his first podium, well, second podium in a row. And his first podium, second podium here in Japan in concession as well. He had his second, try and get his second consecutive podium here in Japan after last season in the wet conditions. But here in the dry conditions, can he get it though? He's got loads all over the back of him as we make our way now down into spoon we go. Barry is in close contention. Of Ramavaj. We know Bayoumi likes to save a lot of EOS as well. We saw it in the first stint, and here in the second stint, he's got a lot of EOS to try and play with. Try and get ahead of Ramavaj. But here we are, there. Ramavaj is derating. The guys ahead are not catching them. DJ, because soon as on 10 lap old soft compound tyres, which should be the better tyre on those mediums, theoretically. And now Bayoumi's all over the back, but we well, you know he waits for the DOS. Very tactical indeed as we make our way now towards the chicane we go. And you can see a lot of wheel spin as well for good measure at the exit of the corner. Actually, Sam is under pressure from laser behind too. As we head onto straight for the final time of this race, here comes Bear Mimi. He'll take P2 away. And here comes Laser now. Up into P4, he goes ahead of Samid. And let's see what happens down towards the chicane because there's still more chances to overtake in this in this race. Gap is 3.2 right now. The gap is going down, but it's far too late for these drivers now. From P2 downwards to get to change MDJ. Like I said before, I think MDJ has done the job and done the job done to get the soft ties to where it needs to be and now he's, he's fully safe. Ramavaj is all over the back of Bear Umi still, so Bear Umi could be under a bit of pressure as well. And let's see if, if Ramavaj can get a good release at the exit of Spoon, he could try to take P2 away, but we'll see. It all depends on the exit of Spoon there. Can he stay in close contention? And you can see a bit of wheel spin out of the corner too. Dragon 2 also had a bit of wheel spin at the exit of that hairpin. But it's been a good race so far. Maybe not the battle for the lead, but for the battle for P2, it's been intensifying. And more yellow flags down there. That looks like, that looks like a Ferrari who's got off the track. And the Haas too, as Lord, Lord Danny Boy does overtake. Smoke up into P12, he goes. But here we are on the back straight for one last time. Glock gets oh, a three-second time penalty. That's, a, that's an eight-second time penalty for him, as he does have a five-second time penalty after this race. But let's see what happens at the chicane. Does anything else happen? Last lap overtakes? I'm not quite sure, but here we are. Lordus and Glock are squabbling over P7 but here comes MDJ to win the Grand Prix and here is Barry to finish in P2 ahead of Ramavaj Laser in P4, here comes Samuel and Dragon in P6 Glock into P7 ahead of Lordus and uh, that's the race done and dusted then MDJ has won the Japanese Grand Prix, fantastic race that's his second win of the season and it's a win he needed and I'll tell you now with and also a big massive factor that's going to give Harry Kane a huge task that the coast and MDJ. That's a big sizable gap that MDJ is going to pull out of the championship. It is indeed an interesting point. What was Hurricane doing tonight? Did he couldn't make it because uh, of personal reasons? I'm not quite sure why he couldn't make it, but at the end of the day, will he, will he regret it? Because um, he had good pace around here in Japan last season, 
but uh, I'm not quite sure what the reason was for not turning up this season as well. So that, that might haunt him towards the end of the Grand Prix. It'll be very important not to miss any more races. And also, it's um, also another thing as well, how he came in the race. Will uh, Bear Remy overtake him with the championship as well? Yeah, Bear Remy's getting closer and closer too, so that could also have an impact on the championship. And both Red Bull squabbling, despite having to work together, And there you go, MDJ gets his victory. Well done to MDJ, but that is a sizable gap in the championship now. That's a good 25 points in the basket hit for him. Very big, big points in the championship for him. Well done. Um, as we head off to Imola for the next race. Before we do that, we'll get the drivers in the party for a podium interview. But Bayoumi, though, is doing a fantastic job this season. He's getting closer as well in the championship. There is Bearumi who will wait for the other two. Maximum points for MDJ, fastest lap and a race win. Nothing better for him. Oh, well then, 26 points there. That's another point gain in the championship as well. And oh, also, word. shout out to Laser for P18 to P4. Mega drive again. Oh, definitely. Driver, him and Nolas are my driver. I'm so close to the driver today, but since Nolas did pick up that time penalty, I think my driver today will have to go to Laser for an excellent, very sensible, very, very sensible race. But well done to Nolas. That is one of his best races he has done this season. Well done to him. He didn't make any obvious mistakes in terms of losing the back of the car or spinning. But track, ped track pedals, track limits can catch a lot of people out around here in Japan. And uh, here is the podium status there. Ramavaj hasn't quite joined yet, so we'll go start with Bear Umi. Bear Umi, mate, another podium. And it uh, looks like your season shape looks to be a good one, too, because you started to get closer in the championship. So, do you feel like there's more in the in the back for you today because you started the hard compound tyres? Do you feel like you saved a bit too much ERS at the start of the race? That's why you uh, lost, lost touch with MDJ. Can you repeat the last? Do you think you were a bit too conservative in the first part of the race because uh, you didn't really put much of a fight against MDJ? So do you feel like that you, that's what you're going to work on? Um, I think uh, MDJ uh, won on the strategy today, so it was uh, quite hard to follow him on the softer compounds, uh, uh, especially in the in the first stint because that was the only opportunity I got. Uh, I thought our, our could follow him, but uh, uh, unfortunately I didn't, so uh, well done to him. I bet you must have been a bit frustrated when the stage car came out because you lost two positions towards Samid, uh, I think it was Nordus 2. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, yeah, shit happens. Um, <laughs> uh, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I lost both and I guess I could have. Uh, I could have undercut uh, and forced uh, MDJ to pit earlier because I knew he was going for the soft tire. So I, I, I knew I had to, to pit earlier and try to uh, reduce the gap and, and maybe come out uh, right behind him or, or uh, best way in front of him. So um, yeah, when the safety car came out, I think that was uh, a bad luck for me. Yeah, it was a deep, but still you had great pace to try and overtake Aldous and um, I think it was Rovage at the time too for P2. So uh, you did the best you could and P2 is a great result for you in the championship. Are you feeling more confident, confident in this championship battle? Yeah, I think I'm uh, sort of uh, getting back uh, to my I don't know where Glock finished, and, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Harry couldn't um, couldn't race today because he, he got a football match, so he had to play. Um, he, he, knew, he he just received a message uh, yesterday, so um, that was bad luck for the team, but um, that's the way it is. Um, I think I'm back for the, the fight uh, for the three first position, but uh, MDJ uh, increased the gap today. For the if you are, if you and Harry Kane for the next few races are together again, do you think you're gonna implement team orders, or is it a free for all between you two for the championship? 
think uh, all the way we are going to... M- maybe in, in the last races, if, if uh, that's the case, we, we might um, see what we can do. But uh, uh, for now, uh, I think we just uh, take one race at a time, uh, at the time and, and um, try to, to get the best result uh, uh, each for ourselves. And then we see uh, in the end of the season. And how are you feeling for the race in Imola, which is next week? Yeah, Imola is, uh, is a nice track for me as well, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I would say the same as today, I'm looking forward to it, so yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, me too, mate. And Oliver, you got any questions for Bear with me? Um, yeah, but with the fight with uh, with Ramavar, it's towards the end of the stage, we know that MDJ is on soft tyres. If you two if you two didn't fight for the podium and you know close up to MTJ, do you think you three, you three win a battle for the victory? No, he had a, a, the gap was too large. Uh, we, we couldn't um, we couldn't um, catch uh, up. He, uh, I, I hope he well, his tire was going, um, and and uh, we could um, maybe uh, get closer to him at the end. But um, no, it was it was just too fast. Yeah, no, we, I don't think we, we lost uh, too much time in, in the fight. I think, I think we just uh, used the DRS advantage to pass each other. And um, yeah, we, we maybe lost a few tens, but um, I don't think more than that. But uh, you saw the race and you saw the, the time, so so I, I don't know. Well, well done, baby. Well done for, for your fear opponent today, buddy. Thank you. Great form indeed, uh, Nordus. And we move on to R- Ramavaj. Are you in the party? Yes. Hello, guys. Ramavaj. I don't even know why I struggled to say your name. It's just the first part. I just struggled <laughs> to say your name, but uh, it is a difficult one indeed. But um, yeah, how you feel? How you feel for the race? Because every single time you race this season, you always seem to be able to end up on the podium. But it happens once again. So uh, how how did the race go for you? Did you feel like you could c- catch MDJ after the car restart? Not a chance. No, no, not a chance. He was. I think he was a bit faster than all of us today, and hats off to him. Um, to be honest, I was pretty good in the first sector, but after that, I was really struggling with um, straight line speed. So I was just trying to hold off the guys behind. And also, being second place ahead in the DRS straight never works out. So that's why I baby we got you in the air one too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I bet you relieved a bit when Nordus picked up a three-second time penalty because you were in that little bubble scrapping for P2. But ever since he picked up a penalty, it, it was between you and uh, Bear Me, so that must have relieved a bit of pressure off you to stay on the podium. Yeah, I mean Nordus was. I mean, hats off to him as well. He was really quick uh, after the safety car restart. Um, it was just unfortunate for him to pick up the penalty, but I think he could have been up there with us. And what about the safety car two situation? I think it helped you to try and rejoin ahead of Bear Rumi, so the Sage card did better for you in terms of your battle with Bear Rumi, but obviously he kept up with you in the end in the second stint. Yeah, I was I got lucky with that, and also I got lucky to you know close up to MDJ, but as I said, he was faster, so and and he picked the right tire, so uh, I was thinking about you know going for the softs, but I thought it was uh, gonna wear off quicker, um, but it wasn't to be. But I'm still happy to be on the podium. <sighs> It's a technical track, Japan, as well. How do you, how do you feel out there? The grip the grip levels was it a bit difficult out there. Yeah, I had a few moments. I almost uh, lost it uh, at the exit of Dagna Two once, I think, uh, and I also saw Remy almost losing it at the hairpin. So it is a, a pretty hard track. Yeah. Well, no matter no matter what the case, you always seem to find yourself on the podium. I think I said that every time. And here you are once again in P3, so yeah, you've done a fantastic job this season, finished on the podium, and uh, how are you feeling for the next race in Imola if you are racing? Well, I like the track. Uh, I don't know about the pace, though. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I really like that track. I think it's very historic, um, and, and I like those tracks. So yeah, we'll see. I'll try to be on the podium again. Oliver, you got any questions for um, Ramavaj? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I defeat you pretty much covered everything, but from from me, uh, Ramavaj, with you and Bear Ruby for fighting, with MJ pulling away, 
well done on the podium. I was going to say, Lee, I can definitely see you as a full time driver going into next season when F124 does come out. So, uh, what, what's your hopes then when, when you do get a full time seat? Do you, do you think you can push on to challenge for championship? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I hope so. You know, uh, I, I'm actually a full time driver right now, but uh, <laughs> I had the difficulties uh, getting, <laughs> getting uh, you know, onto racing uh, a few weeks. For a few weeks, so uh, if you know my time allows me, uh, definitely I'll try to go for a championship. But you know these guys are really, really quick, so it's not going to be easy. Moving on to our race winner then, MDJ. A trouble-free race for you this time, and you haven't had that for a long time. So how did it feel out there, just doing a hazara and dominating to the race? Yeah, I mean, you know. Um... Uh, I was surprised with Baremi's uh, qualifying lap. In, uh, he was very quick. That was a, he nailed that lap. I mean, I would have never got that uh, close to him. So, uh, yeah, f uh, fair play to him. And then in the race, I I went uh, as the only person on the mediums, I think. Uh, so it was kind of tricky. Uh, I guess uh, like if there was a safety car in the first five laps, I would have went to the uh, to the yards and went to the end, but uh, it didn't. So I, I so what I tried to do was just drive away from Bear Remy uh, outside of the one second mark and keep the distance uh, and 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 hope that uh, no one is getting closer or or get into my DRS. So. Um, that all worked and then when the safety came out uh, I was kind of surprised no one else went to the sauce uh, because it was quite clearly that the sauce would make it pretty, e pretty easy uh, as I had a close look on on smoke on the on the beginning stages where I had a heavier car and went 10 laps on them so I thought oh, if he can do it I can most definitely do it with a lighter car Yes, I was about to um, question about the soft cop bar tyres because I'm not really good at making the tyres last, although I had to do it in, in Japan about a few days ago, making the mediums go 19 laps before they went to a puncher. But um, yeah, I was surprised to see uh, not many of the other drivers on the soft cop bar tyres really. So uh, I want to ask as well, do you feel like you're much better in terms of race pace and quality pace? Because we've always, I've noticed this season where qualifying has not been your strongest forte, but in the race, you always see we do better. I mean, it's it's exactly that. Uh, I'm not uh, really great in qualifying, but once we'll be race, I, I overtake some some guys and and have a good pace, like a consistent pace more than than anyone else. Uh, I, I like. If I look around, I see some people making mistakes. Uh, one lap is quicker than the others, uh, but for me, it's it's more consistent. And yes, I also do make mistakes, but uh, and more it's less. Uh, it's more or less. So uh, uh, I found my pace there, and, and, and so that's why my race pace is very strong. Uh, and and that's why it, I made it work at the end. Good stuff, indeed. How are you feeling for the uh, Imola Grand Prix? Well, uh, I'm not sure. I I have. It's it's a difficult track for me to to uh, uh, not get a penalty or not spin. So we'll we'll see what's going to happen next week, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, finish somewhere in the top three. Well, after a chaotic race in Brazil, you finally had it your way here in Japan. So great job indeed, MDJ. You also extend the championship lead ahead of Harry Kane. And how does that make you feel for the championship now? Yeah, uh, look. Uh, for some reason, I thought Harry Kane was racing until I was looking for Harry Kane's time in qualifying. I couldn't find him. <laughs> so uh, I was like, oh, wait, Harry Kane is not racing. And, 
it, it was a surprise. So uh, now I'm leading uh, with a by a margin. Uh, so th this is getting my confidence confidence for the rest of the season pretty high. So I have to I can relax more now. Oliver, you got any questions for uh, Mikey? Yeah, um, with, with, with this championship advantage now, now you're saying you're oozing confidence going into the next few races. Are you going to attempt to relax more going into the races now and not be feeling pressure now from the guys behind like Glock and uh, Ben Remy, Harry Kane, even Laser? Are you, are, you, are you going to be much more relaxed driving now going towards the end of the season? Or is it still, still a championship fight going on? For me, there's also, there will always be a, a championship fight going on. Like, if I uh, am gonna get too relaxed, I'm gonna lose positions and lose all the points that I have uh, gained. Uh, uh, like, I'm gonna lose the advantage and maybe even lose the the win if I get, if I'm gonna relax. So I will, I will just keep on fighting as hard as I can. Uh, and of course, there were some uh, incidents, but. Uh, for me, that's all forg uh, forgotten. Uh, all the uh, fighting, it's all forgotten for me. But uh, I don't know if it's if it's the same for the other person. But uh, we'll 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 see for the for the next few races well, what's going to happen. Any any tracks you're not looking forward to going towards now to the end of the season? Uh, what tracks do we even have? Um, Imola. China, Qatar, Miami, Portugal, Vegas, and Britain. Well, I'm actually looking for. This is an unpopular opinion. I'm gonna. I'm looking for it for Las Vegas. <laughs> well, Not a lot of people say that. Yeah, that's very interesting indeed. It, it does make a great race in terms of watching it as a commentator's <gasps> point of view, but I don't like racing it myself. But MDJ, another question as well. Do you think? Um, You've had more experience. The reason why you're more calmer and able to uh, keep calm under pressure is because of your recent championship fights with other people, like me. Well, yes, I I, I had a lot of championship fights uh, with other people, which of many I didn't win. But uh, from what I learned from those is, uh, there's no reason to to get upset for uh, something stupid and. You just have to look forward and move move on. Like, you know, uh, it's it's not smart to keep certain things uh, with you for the rest of the season and, and make a fight for it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've learned about it, and uh, that's what I'm. Uh, that's my experience, and uh, I'm using that right now uh, to 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 win this one. Well, racing with. Uh, fighting for a championship with you was stressful indeed, but now watching for you, watching you fight for a championship. So uh, yeah, I'm happy for you, mate, and keep it going. Yes, thank you. And that's it then. Thanks, Oliver, for commentating once we, with me once again. It's been a pleasure as always. Yeah, I'll definitely see you again for Emila. Indeed, and uh, join us back for the Emila Grand Prix next Tuesday at half past seven.